What's up, weirdos? They put some more brain-dead, dumb, stupid, boneheaded white people on a dating show and then put that on daytime TV with Jerry Springer. Rest in peace. This one's for you, Jerry. I had never heard of this show before. It's called Baggage, and it is so unhinged, and I love it so much. They get one person who's kind of like dumb, kind of a blockhead, kind of an idiot. In this episode, it's Chris! And then they get three people to match Chris up with, and then throughout the show, steadily, baggage is released about them, and then he can choose to vote people off. Which is such a perfect concept for a show, because the thing with dating shows is sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to get to the juice. It can take like full episodes of people talking to each other to get to anything dramatic But this format they just tell you the dramatic stuff and then get the reaction. It's so perfect Can you tell I'm excited by the way we hit 400,000 subscribers. I love you very much. Thank you So let's go ahead and get into it I've only really seen the intro somebody said that this is like, you know a mukbang except instead of food It's cringe videos. She muck on my bang while I bang my m no She spring on my Jerry till I baggage. <gasps> this is Chris He's got a secret and it's hidden inside this red bag. So at the start of each episode, they do that little thing and get you right into the meat of it. They just immediately get you into the show and what's in there, it could be one of three things. So what could be the first one, Jerry? Does he hire a private detective to investigate his girlfriends? <laughs> Also, yeah, right there, just a little teaser. The audience is the greatest part of the show. The way they react to everything he says, it's like he just got them blasted before they film. Did he stalk his ex-girlfriends? 300 people. <gasps> Court-ordered breathalyzer installed in his car. Does he have so many DUIs that he can't control himself after he has one core's light and suddenly becomes a legal danger to everyone around him? The audience. <gasps> Did he dump an X in the middle of sex? You see what I mean? Basking in awe at the perfection of this show. There's nothing that could ever change about this. This is so perfect. Did he break up with a girlfriend in the middle of whoopee? Then bang, cut to the show. It's so perfect. It's so clean. And I'm gonna say, based on the look of him, the poorly fitting jeans that he steps on with his boots, his untucked shirt, and that blazer over top. This is what a man is on daytime TV. If a man is on daytime TV, it's either Jerry Springer or this dude. And it's perfect because each of those three things could apply so easily to this dude. Me personally, I'm going with the DUIs because he's got the look of somebody who's got natty light in his veins. But then real quick before we get into the baggage with the women, what's Jerry up to? What they say? Oh, he's counting all over the dance floor. I still don't feel right saying that. They say the word has changed meaning, so now the context of it is it's okay to say it. I, I don't know. But okay, let's go get to the good baggage. Give it to me, Jerry. This one's for you, Jerry. Rest in peace, you dancing king. State technician from Tracy, California. Say hello to Caitlin. Hi, Chris. I enjoy dancing, hanging out with my dog, and getting physical with the right man. Maybe you could be him. Okay. <laughs> God, I love her. Hey, what's up? My name's Caitlin, and I love Froyo and getting you inside of me. But she didn't even say it like that. She said it with the same cadence. I like going to the gym, taking long walks with my dog, and humping. I'm getting physical with the right man. All right, up next, she's a real estate agent from Dallas, Texas. Give it up for Holly. Hi, Chris. I love shopping, working out, and spending time with my family. So maybe if you're lucky enough, you'll get to meet them. Oh. She's from Dallas, Texas, represent Dallas, Texas. I'm from Houston. And she's a little bit more subtle with it, but she's wearing a low cut top of <laughs> me gossiping at the hair salon. Did you see Holly? She was wearing a very low cut top on the Jerry Springer show. But you know what, Holly? You should wear a low cut top. You should wear whatever you want and whatever you feel comfortable in. And you look great, real estate agent girl. But anyways, as I was saying, she was a little bit more subtle with it. I like spending time with my family. Maybe you could meet them. <laughs> It's like such a written line. <laughs> like it's not them being themselves. It's so not what they want to say. And if it is, then maybe they were the first generation of AI. Cause a human wouldn't want to say that. Anyways, next. She's a teacher from Whittier, California. Let's hear it for Raquel. Hey Chris, they saved the best for last. I have a passion for fashion. I enjoy painting and I love going to concerts. Maybe you could take me sometime. Yeah. Raquel had confidence. She had chutzpah and she had the panache. And she also has a very cool top. She looks cool. She looks cool. and I I like Raquel and I hope she wins, but also I don't want Chris to win, so I hope she loses so that she can win by not having Chris. You know what I'm talking about? But we are like just barely into the episode and I am already so invested in these people. All jokes aside, I think that Raquel is going to win because she's got the camera presence. But first, real quick, Cooper Riley. Hey, over here, big guy. Yeah, thank you to Keen for sponsoring this video. Keen connects you with talented tarot card readers and astrologers. So if you're somebody who's interested in readings, I highly recommend Keen because I tried it out. As a new customer, they give you the first 10 minutes for just $2, which is like really, really good savings. Up to $99 in savings, that's almost $100. But I'd never done a reading before and I didn't know really anything about it. And you can do it like over the phone or just over chat. So if you get anxious about talking to people on the phone or anything like that, you can just like chat. And that's what I did. I mean, like I genuinely really 
enjoyed it. Especially $2 for the first 10 minutes. And my thought at first was, okay, but how fast is it gonna go by? Am I gonna get like my money's worth? Well, even in the chat, when like they have to type things out, I was getting paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs that were like ab about me. She got specific with it. And I've never done like tarot card readings or astrology. It wasn't, oh, you'll find love someday, little boy. It was genuinely like a year long projection with details about, you know, specific characteristics to look out for. But I was impressed. And you know, I go into these things with skepticism, but I really enjoyed it. I had a good time. And I'm going to say it, it was worth it. $1.99 for the first time. $99 in savings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can scan this QR code, by the way, or you can go to trykeen.com forward slash film cooper for this $1.99 deal, which is up to $99 in savings. Or you can click the link in my description. And on the in the description, you can click it. Oh, that's so cool. I, I like that. Ladies, it is time to show us your smallest piece of baggage. Ladies, it is time to reveal your first piece of baggage. He was like a little squire. He was like a squire for a prince. My lord, it's time to reveal your first piece of baggage, sire. Sire, take the smallest piece of baggage out and reveal it at once. Yes, my lord. That's really what Jerry Springer is. He's the role of like the perfect court jester. What am I talking about? I love you, Jerry Springer. This one's for you, Jerry. But first, Caitlin is gonna go and reveal her first piece of small baggage, and then and Chris gets to go, hmm, do I still like her? Even though he himself is a DUI fiend or a stalker, or he broke up with somebody while they were making a whoopee. Getting physical with the right man. Let's start with Caitlin. I'm obsessed with being photographed. You see what I mean? The audience, this is so funny. That's so not even that big of a deal. Like it's okay, I guess, you know, it's a small thing, but the audience reacts like almost worse than the DUI thing about Chris. I'm obsessed with being photographed. <gasps> ew, ew. It wasn't even like gasps. It was, oh, ew. You think you're pretty? You like people taking pictures of you because you think you're pretty? Ew. You don't deserve that guy. He can drink 57 cold Coors Lights and get behind the wheel of a car and operate it with, you know, well, I guess not. Well, she is well developed. <laughs> yeah. Ew, you're too old and she's too young for you to be saying that and then not be weird. Anybody, that would be weird. Well, she certainly is well developed. She certainly hit puberty. Yes, she certainly seems to have developed through puberty. That was like a vain thing. I mean, photographs are great to capture the memory and all, but I don't know, it just seems like it might be all more about you than kind of the moment and going out and about and enjoying life instead of kind of documenting it all the time. Okay, well, what the fuck, what's, do you not understand? Oh my God. This is what I'm talking about when I say he is daytime TV coded. Like he's built for this. Because the real response there is, that's not that big of a red flag, it's fine. But he's like, oh, I'm on a show called Baggage, so I really gotta, you know, play this up. Oh, you like being photographed? Yeah, it's uh, basically kind of vain, I guess. You know, it's like, you're not about living in the moment. You'd rather have pictures taken of you in the moment, which means you're not being present with me. They literally just said, you know, I like having pictures taken of me, which a lot of people do. A lot of people do. And his reaction was, okay, so you think you're better than me and you're better than everyone else and you're a scumbag piece of crap and you're getting kicked off the show. And the audience, by the way, Fuck you, yeah, Chris! You tell her, Chris! You like getting pictures taken of you? Ew! The hell's gonna happen when he gets the big baggage? <laughs> I love to look and feel beautiful. I love when people give me the attention. And wouldn't you take pictures of me all day if I were with you? Are y'all weirdos? Are y'all with me right now? What the hell was that? Um, yeah, well, I like, you know, the attention and having pictures because I'm feeling beautiful and I'm looking beautiful. And wouldn't you like to? It's like a malfunctioning robot. And you can tell that she's very nervous and she's just trying to, you know, play the role of who she's supposed to be on TV right now and fighting through the social anxiety. Let me tell you what, her back is against the rope. Social anxiety has hands right now. And that is why so far she's my hero because if you, you look at that and you go, idiot. But then you look underneath the surface and you go, oh, seems stupid because of the social anxiety. And I see a kind, sweet soul in there. So if she loses, I'm taking Chris and I'm punching him in the <laughs> I don't think I could say that online. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know this is a rest in peace for Jerry thing, but the hell is that? <laughs> what? Hey, let me cut around, do a little bit of improv on the show with all these kids. You like pictures taken of you? Yeah, pop that ass out, pop that ass out. She's like, ah, you're actually taking that picture though. So are, are you gonna are you gonna delete that or I mean, I, Jerry, and yeah, turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. Yeah, you're looking really well developed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna say it. This show is unhinged. <laughs> Sorry, by the way, I laugh. I genuinely am so jolly when I film these videos. I don't ever want to have the Jimmy Fallon allegations levied against me, so I'm just going to laugh less and be less happy. Foresight, I'm seeing that happening. But it's not true. I'm giggling, but I'm going to withhold it. Keep going. I watch reality TV during sex. Yes. Oh, man. This audience is off their 
asses. They must hand out each person like five mandatory vodka cranberry, <laughs> which is my drink of choice. Because the audience reacts like this. Watch reality TV during sex. Ew, ew, who is this? Ew, low cut top and she has sex with TV on? What is she, some kind of a whore? Wait a second, does that say she watches reality TV during sex? Wait, she's literally a slut. This is literally an audience full of gossips and I love it so much. But if he comes and tries to do some bullshit, like trying to make it actual baggage when it's so not, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take this and I'm just- If you're watching reality TV and like there's other things to watch going on, I mean, where's your attention and you know? This is a man who's ungrateful. This is a man who just doesn't understand what it's like. Dude, do you know how grateful you should be? That's Holly right there. If Holly or anyone gives you the opportunity, Nay, the blessing of their company in such a manner. And you have a reaction of, oh, come on, you should be looking at my, my balls and wiener more. Be grateful that you're even there. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. Okay, what'd she say though? You know, if maybe he was doing a better job and could keep my attention better, I wouldn't have to do that. Oh, that's so. tense. <laughs> <laughs> so we shouldn't have that problem with you, I don't think. Oh yeah, she's the one from Dallas, Texas. Those hair salon ladies are going crazy right now. She says she talked about intercourse on national television. Yes, she did. She said she liked to slurp him up and spit on it. Yes, she did. I was telling Daryl that I can excuse the low cut top, but I draw the line at intercourse. Shouldn't speak of such things online. <laughs> It's not my business, but where exactly is that TV? On the ceiling. Oh, that's... All right. Well, now we know her position. TV. Anyway, our... Listen, Jerry, you were already on thin ice. This is not about you, Jerry. Aren't you married, Jerry? Well, oh, damn, no, he's not married. So is this also just like a dating show for him? Because it seems like it. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> Let's go to the next baggage. Hopefully it's something about boobs. I wear my panties two days in a row. I'm just thinking I hope I don't get you on the second day. Oh my god, what the hell? Who is this audience? This is definitely for an audience of judgmental like 60 year olds. And me, baby. <laughs> she wears her panties two days in a row? The audience, ew, ew, literally what the fuck? Noelle Miller reference. But then for Chris to go, oh. God, I, well, I sure hope I don't get you on the second date. Have you seen her? But I said earlier, you should be thanking God that you have the opportunity to spend time with Raquel in such a manner. Uh, she wore her panties two days in a row? Mm, that sounds gross. And she's icky and gross. Fight back, Raquel, you camo, leopard print, beautiful... She's a beautiful girl. I just would be yeah. concerned about your personal hygiene and all that, you know? I mean, right. you seem like right, you take care I'm of yourself. Right, but I'm clean, so. though. I'm clean. I do the smell check. I'm pretty good. You do the smell check? Oh, man. Interesting. The only one where it was, like, gross about the woman's, you know, private parts did Jerry not be creepy at her. But that's the nature of the show. Daytime TV is old guys being creepy to young gals. Come on, it's baseball. And that's Hollywood. It's what it's fucking about, baby. Okay, but now they move on to the next round, which is a bigger piece of baggage, but the women don't assign themselves to that one. They're organized randomly, and they're all revealed, and then he picks one that he wants to send away, and then that woman gets up and leaves. Which I like. I can't wait to hear the audience go, oh! For one, I collect men's used underwear. I'd like to help you out, but I'm going commando. This format is set up so that Jerry can have a quick little one-liner that's dirty and creepy after each baggage. That makes sense. I'm going commando. <laughs> I communicate telepathically with my dog. I just email mine. <laughs> Whoever said that, you just made fun of them. And by the way, she was right. Because I can communicate telepathically with Gustav right now. Check this out. And that just worked. I said to him, woof. And he said back, woof, woof. Bag number three. I scan men's testicles in prison all day. I don't know what your hours are, but I wonder when he gets off. <laughs> Gerald Springsteen. Please, I scan men's testicles in prison all day. By the way, that doesn't really seem like a red flag. It's like a, you know, job. Like, I don't think a guy's red flag would say gynecologist. I bet it would probably be as a green flag. Cause he's like, oh dude, I know how to eat box. <laughs> Gerald, I don't like the whole, when did they get off? Implying that she scans their balls and then they come. <laughs> I wonder when he gets off. That is what he's saying. That is what he's saying. He said that she goes, Beep, beep, beep. And all the guys go, uh, uh. Wait, does, does scan mean like scan, scan? Beep, beep. Because do the ball sacks have a barcode? Let me check. Mine do not. I wonder when he gets off. Okay, let's get your concerns here. I scan men's testicles in prison all day. I don't want a girl who's touching other guys' stuff all day long. I don't I want her only touching mine, you know? Yeah. This is such a guy who's on daytime TV. This is daytime TV guy. You'd be walking into the casting room and there'd be 27 dudes who look exactly like Chris. What if he was like, oh, what? She works in prison scanning men's balls all day? Well, I really ethically and morally don't align with the prison industrial like complex. So I'm fucking out. Plus, I wish she was on my balls all day. <laughs> He's such an insightful young man. So, play, 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 Socrates coded. I'm going commando. 
I mean, look, it's a job that someone's got to do, but I'd be concerned about her, her safety. I communicate telepathically with my dog. I mean, I like, I like animals. I like talking, you yeah. know, to my dog in, like, a little high-pitched voice, right? But, uh... <laughs> you do? <laughs> well... For all my Gen Z folks out there who don't understand the tone of what he's saying, because you haven't heard it really ever, what he's saying there is, Oh, you're gay. <laughs> oh, you talk to your dog in a high-pitched voice all day. Okay, isn't that gay? And yes, Gerald, that is gay. Oh, Gus, you're such a little handsome man. Me when I'm gay. But again, Chris, it's like he's told the show is like, Oh, yeah, big baggage gets revealed and it's a red flag, but some of their stuff isn't a red flag. That's just like a cute, quirky thing. Well, who cares? You do? <laughs> I collect men's used underwear. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't really want a girl who's collecting men's underwear or anything of, like, her previous guys. Yeah. That's actually the first time he's ever said anything that wasn't stupid. Hey, everybody, give a round of applause to Chris for saying something a little bit insightful. One is your deal breaker. My deal breaker is... So now he picks his deal breaker, which is just one of those, and they go away, and then the woman goes away. Like I said earlier, shut up. I scan men's testicles in prison all day. Ladies? Please claim your baggage. This guy is such an idiot. That was the biggest non-red flag out of any of them. What does he think is happening in there? It's a prison where she's scanning the inmates' balls. You know, like for a job, not in a S-E-X-U-A-L context. Does he think, oh yeah, when she sees those balls, she probably just wants them so bad. I'm like 100% sure that that's not the case. But he voted her off because he is Chris, the man. <laughs> Hey, Glenn, if you want to explain. That's not the only thing I scan. I scan hearts, livers, veins and arteries. Why the hell do they make her say that? that was so fun. So her job isn't I scan testicles, which by the way, I should have known that. So is she just a doctor? She's like a, you know, a cat scan technician. So she's got like a very well-paying job and she scans people for sicknesses and heals them. And the producer said, she looks at dude's balls all day, bro. She's just soaking up those balls. As a part of my job description, of testicles are on the body. So if there's something wrong with them, I can scan it. And they're like, okay, so you look at balls all day and you scan them and you wish they were in your mouth and you were sucking on them. Okay, they did her dirty. They did Caitlyn dirty there. Getting physical with the right man. Ladies, it's time to think fast on your feet and I'm gonna ask each of you a series of questions so Chris can see who's the right woman for him. Okay, now real quick what they do is they ask a series of quick questions to the women to see how they deal under pressure, I guess. But I'm sure that these questions are designed to give these women a fair chance and to look smart on TV. <laughs> Show Chris how good you are with your feet when you hit the dance floor. Why would they do that to her? That is so mean. Just on the spot, hey, dance for us. Dance for us and don't look stupid. Seduce him with your dance moves. And the way she handled with that was perfect. Okay. Me and Holly on the dance floor in Dallas, Texas after she's, you know, I guess wearing my underwear. God, what an interesting show. I'll be honest, I never noticed your feet, but have a seat. Wait a second, by the way, he does have a wedding ring on. He has a wedding ring on and he just said that I've been looking at your boobs this whole time. He literally just said, I needed the milk, mom, I needed some energy. Show him your best jazz moves. <laughs> Why do they make these women dance? Why do they do that? But by the way, Raquel, fantastic. You can never go wrong with this move or this move. Less people know you're not taking it seriously. Oh my God, Jerry Springer's asking me to dance. I guess I'll do this. She seems funny and I like her. And her red flag was that she communicates telepathically with her dog. She is the most non-red flag person this entire show. The worst thing about her is that she sometimes wears her panties two days in a row, but she says she's so clean. So maybe that means she's just crazy clean. So pick her. But now they go and they reveal their biggest piece of baggage before he makes his decision and then they reveal his baggage and then they make their decision. I love this. Could this be a new series? Is this good enough to be a new series? Because there are more episodes of this. Comment if you want me to make more of these. Oh, shit, sorry, I thought that was the vibe. Okay, let's keep going. I dumped my fiance with a text message. The audience is so unhinged in this show. It's absurd. Where do they find these people? By the way, the big baggage has been just as bad as the little baggage. Like their reactions have been equal the entire time and not in a way of light. They have been intense. You wear your panties two days in a row. Ew! You dumped your fiance with a text message. Ew! You wear eyeliner. Ew! Okay, but let's see what Holly's situation is here. Maybe her fiance was a loser and had it coming, girl. If you have the ability to dump a fiance, someone you were gonna spend the rest of your life with, like, let alone just someone you begin dating. Like, that's just, I mean, why would I want to invest my time into that? <laughs> the audience, yeah, tell her, Chris, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I moved out to LA and he was still in Dallas, and I just didn't have the heart to do it over the phone, so I sent it in a text. I know, 
terrible, but you know, Chris, if things work out with us, I would, I would do it in person with you. <laughs> That's so fucking bad. She's so fucking lost this show. She is terrible. She didn't even have a good excuse. Like, oh yeah, I moved to LA. I was trying to do more LA things. And I, you know, just dumped out. They don't want to do it over the phone. Sorry, I'm trying to do a Valley Girl accent. It's not working. But that's like a bad excuse. And then he's obviously, is for the first time, responding like a normal human being. What are you talking about? <laughs> and then for her to go, oh, come on, Chris. When I dump you, it'll be over the phone. I don't know if that was your move. I don't know if that was your move there, Holly. But, uh, you know, she's wearing that low cut top. Maybe Chris just looks right underneath her. Maybe doesn't even look her in her eyeballs and picks off something else. You know what I'm saying? Because you know she has intercourse when she watches the TV. Please, Please reveal, reveal your, your baggage. baggage. I'm addicted to online shopping and I'm $50,000 in debt. She's already suffering. She's in $50,000 of debt and the audience goes, oh, come on, get it together, Raquel. Shot, shot, shot. Oh, come on, what the fuck is wrong with you? Fucking idiot. That's tough. God, what's worse out of those red flags, honestly? Because Holly is a little bit of like, I guess not caring is what that red flag says. But then this one is her life is a little bit out of control, but also $50,000 in debt. I mean, come on, that's just, you know, a lot of people's two years of money. But if Chris was worth his salt, if Chris had enough money to his name, that wouldn't be a problem. But being addicted to online shopping, being addicted feels like it's something that won't be able to be crawled out of. For the first time, these are both, you know, good baggage. These are juicy, like actually juicy. What do you think he's gonna do? Me personally, I think he's not gonna go with a woman who just said she's gonna dump him. Just, you know, my intuition. <laughs> Raquel, you're obviously stylish and keep yourself well. I mean, I think you should buy some underwear with it. Um. Well, I like designer clothing. Um, I like expensive taste. And um, I do online shopping, so it comes and delivers to my house. That is what online shopping is. I like designer things and I have expensive taste, but you don't have an expensive wallet. Ooh! But I want to get these things because I like them. Can I afford them? No. But I like them so I can have them. Do you know how many things I like that I can't have. If I got everything that I liked just because I like it, I might be $50,000 in debt. Both of them have completely fumbled in this last section, although they're fumbling Chris, so is it really? <laughs> I don't understand, why is that your excuse for this? Yes, I'm $50,000 in debt because I like nice things and I can't afford them, So, I, but I still buy them anyways. Normally when I, there's something nice that I like and I can't afford it, I just, you know, I can't buy it, so I don't. But that's what credit cards are for, I guess. I should get into credit card debt. That's what I should do. You do? <laughs> don't worry about it, Chris, though I'm paying it off right now, so. Holly, tell Chris why he should choose you and not Raquel. I think you should choose me because I'm a sweet, Southern girl, Southern hospitality for sure. We definitely know how to take care of our men, so you'd be in good hands. And I definitely don't think you need to choose her. She's obviously crazy. She talks to animals. So, and she's in debt. Uh, that's a lot of baggage. Okay, Holly, what the hell was that? I've never seen a backstab like that in my life. Was it Raquel or Julius Caesar? Am I right? Raquel was just sitting there like this, like Abraham Lincoln. Then Holly Wilkes Booth came up and just... She's not crazy because she talks to a dog with her mind. That's quirky. I think it's crazier to dump your fiance who you were okay to get engaged with, but couldn't do a phone call with. I think that's a bigger red flag than that. And she's in debt, so she's an idiot. And I was making those jokes a second ago, but I wasn't standing next to Holly because, you know, truthfully, she's doing great. And I'm sure she's gonna pay those suckers off in like 10 years. God, I feel bad for her. Uh, Raquel, you tell Chris why he should choose you and not Holly. Well, I'm a sweet girl. I'm very personal, unlike some people. Um, I like to have a good time, and I would always keep a smile on your face. Yeah. Raquel's a pro. I'm standing by what I said earlier. Raquel should be chosen because she just said a quick little defense of herself directed at Holly, and then just, I'm sweet, I'm nice, and I'm going to keep a smile on your face. Holly, you have too much baggage. Dance party, Holly style dance party. Holly style dance party, okay, okay. That's what happens when you try to stab somebody in the back. You're in a mirror dimension and you stab, but when you stab, you stab. So if you stab, then science says you stab. And then you've been stabbed, Holly. Science would say, but now we get to the biggest part of the show where is Raquel gonna reject Chris when they reveal his baggage? Which, what is his baggage? Raquel, of these three possibilities, which would be the toughest one for you to have to accept? The dumping the girlfriend while having sex. Yeah, that would be a bad one, because you could wait till afterwards. That's like so traumatizing, that's insane. I would say that that's a million times worse than dumping a fiance over text message. But it surely it's the DUI one. I mean, look at him. Please reveal your baggage. Oh! 
that. And for once, Chris gets to feel the outrage of that audience. Oh, that's what she just said! Everybody in the audience pointing at each other. Wait, that's what she said. That's what she said. That's what, 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 what. Well, you know what? Shout out to him for not having any DUIs. Chris, what happened? Like, it was a long, volatile relationship. We had been fighting for a while. Here we are being intimate with each other, and she decided to bring it up. It just ruined the mood, and it... All the reality of it just came to me and just ended it right then and there. Damn, am I crazy right now? That was a really good response. That is like the dream response that I was expecting Holly to say earlier about the text message dump. Do we think, is she still gonna go with him though? I feel like she's gotta go with him after that. But he's also just guy on daytime reality TV dating show. Like he's just guy. So what we know about him is nothing. And then one negative thing that's actually not that bad. I've learned my lesson. I think, you know, I don't think that's gonna be an issue. All right. Well, Raquel, can you accept Chris's baggage? Well, Chris. I'm gonna accept your baggage. Oh, congratulations! Raquel and Chris will enjoy- Raquel dance. This is like the button, but it's a little bit more wholesome, or maybe it was just this episode. Also, it's not more wholesome thanks to Gerald Springsteen. Rest in peace, Jerry. This one was for you, Jerry. But you can tell with a show like this that the audience it was designed for were people who are a little bit more okay with, you know, getting judgmental about the gossip versus the button, which is more of like a younger generation online content type, you know. And that's why, if I'm gonna be honest, I kind of really like this show because they are not afraid of letting the gossip get juicy and they have an audience that isn't going to be understanding and forward thinking. You wear panties two days in a row? <gasps> but that's baggage and that's baseball. I love you weirdos very much. Please subscribe. Hey, it's me again real quick. If you want to, you know, try Keen, again, you can just click the link in the description or go to trykeen.com forward slash film cooper. It's fun. It's a great deal. I enjoyed it. I had a great time. I am so excited. Guys, I just hit like 400,000 followers or subscribers, which is crazy because I feel like I just got the, uh, I don't think you can see it, the $100,000 or 100,000 subscribers plaque. And then, like, in one month, I gained, or like, in like a week, I gained like 100,000 out of nowhere. Which, I don't even know what I've done. Am I in y'all's recommended a bunch now? Which, if so, I'm so grateful for you watching. But I'm also sorry that if I'm, like, annoying you on your